ए इज इंडिया मोस्ट फेयरलेस एंड इंडिपेंडेंट जर्नलिस्ट हे लीड्स अ टीम ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस्ड इंडिपेंडेंट जर्नलिस्ट एंड एडिटर्स विद सेंट्रल मिशन to hold the most powerful governmental and corporate factions accountable he has a proven track record of breaking boundaries taking risks and producing innovative rigorous journalism he is often criticized for being so direct and straightforward he is satya brahma the founder chairman and editor in chief of network 7 media group india is an unusual country an inspiring democracy a depressing reality a celebration of mind boggling diversity it's an ongoing saga of unparalleled migrations i thought of giving migration a headline millions from what could be the theme of this congress from ancient so what we are going to debate about technology from and what are the most introspection that we need to do for the multi at a time when narendra modi government came in the year 2014 and in toilets through the last 5 year what he has done over the heads so i thought of a not a better topic other than the headline management so what happens in india it's a very peculiar country in a nation with 1.53 billion people India. We often get engrossed in the headlines. We don't try to go deep into the details and try to find out where we have missed the factors actually. Establishment, corrupt. So, innovation is key. To me, if you ask me, unless and until healthcare access and affordability is not provided to the rural India, the very purpose of healthcare delivery mechanism in India is going to collapse. a quiet saga despite the tall claims by the various ministers population and the so many other persons in the authorities with 65% i don't think uh, there has been a substantial change in terms of their narratives there is no doubt and i repeat i'm saying there is no doubt on the intention of the present government under the visionary leadership of narendra modi but beyond the hierarchy to create jobs so where it is happening actually i often meet dr harshvardhan and, and i'm also on the advisory committee over there and I, i do tell them that this is what has happened you need to roll out these programs you must monitor it you must see it where it is heading jobs but the tragedy with india that in one day it is going to be nrc in another day it is going to be citizenship bill in third day it is going to be the kashmir so where the healthcare is all about let's do it the ambitious program which prime minister narendra modi rolled out so the world's fa- the world's biggest program ayushman bharat which promised to give healthcare delivery to half a billion population in india if you if you minutely examine if you minutely analyze you will find it has actually not delivered through the findings which my team has done it in almost all states and the union territories we have found out that the real beneficiaries of this are not getting to them actually many times it is surprising many private hospitals decline the patients to treat and the what the government is saying government is saying that there should be a public private partnership and we need to bring out everybody's consensus all the stakeholders should be in one platform and debate discuss introspect and implement but in reality what has happened the public institutions mechanism in the country i am saying with a full sense of responsibility has collapsed except few like aims and others you go to any rural india you go to any parts of india's no psc none of the doctors willing to go to the remote areas and none of them even take interest in going over there had there been a change in mindset of the government to think something about the doctors those who pass out how many india has got a close to around 10 lakhs registered doctors but do the governments are really serious about taking them actually are they giving that much of incentives to our doctors to pass out after struggling so many years of uh, studies ironically it is not the fact you need to give them an incentive you need to give them a message look we are with you look you are the one who are the ambassadors of health in india you are going to give 
the service which the government is going to do it. Neither the Congress, nor the BJP, nor the any other government have failed. And there is also a trust deficit between the federal structure of the country. The central government thinks in one line, the state government thinks in another line. In other words, if central government thinks that this has to be done, there will be another Mamta, there will be another YSR, there will be another Kejriwal, there will be another people opposing it. Why the opposite? The opposite for the sake of opposing it actually. And I want all the states to come together and sit with the central government irrespective of any political affiliation. Sit across the table, discuss. Don't look at political brownie points. It's not, it's not good for the country. It's not going to help. You have ruined the country for the last, uh, since independence in 47. It is high time that we must think about it. And that is what my focus has been on healthcare innovations. This is where India is going to come. This is where India is going to go global. This is where India is going to transform. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not defense. It is not anything else. But healthcare is very key. As you've seen in my slides, 1.6 to 7% of healthcare spending. What is this? This is nothing actually. How are you going to treat the patients actually? There are no infrastructure available with them. Private hospitals are doing a brilliant job. But they also need to be much more cautious in terms of affordable healthcare. Because many of the patients who come from outside, they do not have that much money in their pockets. But truly, I think the trends are going to change and many have realized. And the, some of the doctors whom I have invited today, who are also present here, they actually have been very kind enough and they have told me in my interview and discussion that when they see a poor and weak and needy patients, they don't charge them the way they charge actually. In fact, they tell the hospital management that this is what we are going to charge, although they don't have the money. This is a very good trend. And this is what we are looking for actually. So, in the end, what I am going to tell, the key factor is the policy making process. We are rolling out policies after policies. Now the National Human Commission has also come into the picture now. The government is planning to scrap Indian Medical Association because of the nepotism and others. But what are they going to replace it? Are they going to MCI, are they going to replace it with a finer mechanism which will give justice? Is a big question mark. That will debate actually. Also we have to discuss about the ethics in healthcare, how the country is progressing actually. What should be the relationship between the doctors and the patients? Are the relationship between the doctors and patients going to be much more smoother and much more effective the way it is? We need to discuss further actually. Do the ministers need to job there properly? Yes, they need to do the job properly because they don't have to think about their board banks and constituencies and to win the election. We have elected them to power. It is their day time to job. It is their job to deliver. If they can't deliver, they should vacate the seat actually. And to me, if you ask me, I would like to conclude a fine India, a healthier India is going to be possible through the merger of all the association and coming together of all the stakeholders that would make a real India and a healthier India. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shatya, for setting the tone for this afternoon's discussions and deliberations.